What up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoke and Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the Brio Beardscape. You know, everybody owns a trimmer. If you have been trimming for long enough, then you have most likely had a terrible experience with a crappy trimmer. Either the blades get dull really fast and start pulling hairs really loud, the motor feels weak, or the battery just stops holding a charge. If that sounds familiar, it's time to upgrade to the Brio Beardscape. I've been using the Beardscape once a week for like two years now, and I have only charged it once. Yes, the battery does last that long. It's perfect for trimming your face, head, or general manscaping. And one of the reasons the Brio Beardscape cuts better than others is because it has a ceramic blade rather than stainless steel. It's sharper and lasts longer, and you have to oil it less often. It's quiet, it's powerful, and I love it. It's like the Tesla 100D of, uh, of razors. It may be time for you to upgrade to the Brio Beardscape. Go to brio for life that's Brio, the number 4 lifecom and use code SMOKING at checkout to get the best price online. That's brio for lifecom code SMOKING. We got you, son. And how about that dash cam life? You guys seen those Russian dash cam videos and you know the crazy things happen behind the wheel of a car. You need a good dash cam either for safety to prevent against insurance fraud. If you're driving ride share, definitely for your own safety and insurance. And also you might become internet famous. Nextbase is the world's leading dash cam brand. They got you. They're now available in the US. It's more than just a dash cam. The Series 2 range includes five models packed with exciting features, 1440p resolution, an IPS touchscreen. When you park the car, the dash cam will keep running and record any movement around your vehicle or if it gets hit, and there's an emergency SOS system, potentially life-saving feature. It can view in your cabin or the road behind you, and now they're available in the U.S. at Best Buy and Amazon. Here's the deal for you. Use code 20 smoking. That's two zero and the word smoking on Amazon. Get 20% off all next base dash cams. Code 20 smoking at checkout on Amazon and you get 20% off all next base dash cams courtesy of the smoking tire. Yo, how about this one though? So your check engine light comes on. First you panic and then what do you do? Well, step one, you get yourself a Blue Driver Pro Scan Tool. Blue Driver can read all the computer systems in your vehicle, tell you what the problem is, and suggest solutions from a database of millions of ASC verified fixes. Then you can fix the problem yourself or head to the garage armed with powerful knowledge. Either way, you're in control. Plus, Blue Driver can do so much more than just read codes. View live data from your vehicle, read freeze frame and mode 6, do a smog check, and stay up to date on recalls and service bulletins, and much more. That's why Blue Driver is the best-selling scan tool on Amazon. Don't just take our word for it. Check out the thousands of positive reviews on Amazon. Reviews written by real folks who saved a ton of time and money with Blue Driver. For a limited time, take advantage of this special smoking tire offer, visit bluedriver.com slash TST to get 10% off the Blue Driver Pro Scan Tool. That's bluedriver.com slash TST to get 10% off the Blue Driver Pro Scan Tool. Don't let your car troubles be a mystery again. Get Blue Driver today. Bluedriver.com slash TST. And last but not least, if you found $100 on the street, would you pick it up or would you keep walking? Of course, you'd take the money. So why do you keep picking winners and not betting on them? That's why I go to my bookie. It's fast, it's easy, and they pay when you win. Let's face it, where you're betting is just as important as who you're betting on. I wouldn't be telling you guys to bet with them if they weren't the best. My bookie has got you covered. You can bet on games after kickoff. If by the second half it looks like your bet is going to lose, you can always just take the other side. The kind of guy that likes to bet a little and win a lot. Try a parlay. If all your picks come through, you'll multiply your winnings, and no matter how you bet, the NFL season is the best time of year. Join now, and my bookie will double your first deposit. Use code TIRES to activate the offer. Promo code TIRES and get my bookie to double your first deposit. Visit mybookie.ag today. That's mybookie.ag. Use code TIRES. You play, you win, you get paid.
Okay, on this episode of the podcast, uh, because we had stacked up the last episodes, this one is actually from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we recorded a lot in one week. But this is uh, my friend Jeff Zwart, famous director, photographer, cinematographer, and racer, and uh, Jennifer Nicole, who's an old friend of mine who uh, has been in the car game for at least 10 years, like me. And she runs the Porsche Experience Center in Carson, California, which is a, uh, a handling circuit. Uh, it's wet skid pad, like all this cool stuff they do. You can get your car delivered there. They service like Porsche 917s there, and Jennifer Nicole rules. So Jeff Zwart and Jennifer Nicole on the Smoking Tire Podcast. I measure his car first. I hope it fits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What up, everybody? It's the Smoking Tire Podcast. I hope this show doesn't sound as echo- echoey as my headphones do, but I'm, I'm back in the, um, well, the cold seat today. Zach on the ones and twos. Zach has a turn. Eric, Eric. Eric. <laughs> that was good. Zach was off um, filming things in all over the world. And uh, more importantly, we got Zwart and we got Jennifer Nicole. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Welcome in. Hey. Two Porsche people. <laughs> Jen, I need my watch back. Jen, I think it looks good on me. Jen is a diamond enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jeff's got a big movie. Uh. Yeah. Yep. and it's amazing with, with dogs. I can't watch it yet. I'm wait. I'm honestly, I can't cry that much in the theater. I know you how can't it's cry in go. public. <laughs> I know you how go. it's gonna you go. Wait for it to stream. I can't do it. The yeah. art of racing in the rain, though, is in theaters. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, is that that was? I saw a good rating there. Someone just had a good rating. Good. IMDb seven point four to ten. Um, oh, it's definitely a 10. <laughs> I think you should go see it on the big screen because there's nothing I like it. I crying. Yeah, yeah you crying. go take your new wife. The, the dog good. fucking go dies, out. right? Yeah, the no, dog the dog comes back. How about that? The dog <laughs> does come back. Yeah, okay. and the scene of him coming back is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. So. There, it, like, and the, Jeff's in it. <laughs> yeah, I thought there's well. a music video out right now for the Mumford & Sons song, Beloved, uh-huh. which is literally mm-hmm. about the life in, of a puppy and like a girl wow. growing up and then the puppy dies it's like three and a half minutes I'm on the elliptical machine like what is sweat and what is tears uh, I'm, I'm going to watch it but I can't I can't do it in theaters and my, okay. and my wife my wife we love our animals so much my wife refuses to see it in the theaters okay she, well. but we're gonna iTunes that bitch as soon as it comes out okay so. well, well we'll but do Will a little Turner, shout out Will thing. Turner's cars are in it which I'm exactly very, how did they decide to do Turner's cars for that well, that was kind of uh, partly my decision, actually. Really? So, yeah. Is this an aesthetic decision? or uh? um, It was several parts to that. Um, first of all, you know, when obviously racing is a reoccurring theme and it takes place over many years. And I thought that Will Turner's been involved with BMWs for all these years. Uh-huh. And so the initial thought was we'd be a little more attentive to the timeline of the actual movie. Yeah. And so once I had IMSA on board, which was kind of a call to Scott Atherton primarily at IMSA and say, hey, you know, this movie's coming out. We want to we want to base it around that. Because what was great about IMSA, it had literally every stepping stone of a racing mm. career. And Will's cars being BMWs, they kind of haven't changed a lot in terms to the general public. Yeah, yeah. And so I thought, well, if I could start, you know, Danny, our main character of the movie, yeah. played by Milo, in a BMW, it can kind of grow on that side of it. it. In the end, I know every there's really no timeline in it. I just felt that that was a more of a timeless car to start with. Mm-hmm. And we naturally wanted Porsche to be an element of it. So we kind of made that the pinnacle of his GT racing before he went to prototypes. It's cool, man. Yeah, was um, I was. I was just so happy to see my friend's liveries and that's yeah. Being no, and Will was Will was awesome. great. Uh, he literally, you know, every team that we worked with was fantastic, and it was just. It's kind of cool because you know I've been hanging around these racers for all these years, and to kind of ask finally for the favors and yeah. finally to come out and do it. Everybody just you know really really stepped up to it. That's awesome. And Jen's here. Hi, Jen. Hey, Matt. Jen runs the PEC. That's Porsche Experience Center in Carson. Mm-hmm. And you helped build it, too. Which I Which is did. pretty awesome. Remember yes. when you, like, didn't have a cool job? <laughs> uh, probably She's had a cool like job ever since I know. Was it like 10 years ago? <laughs> Maybe first 15. Yeah. Well, because Andy Duncan was here yesterday. Was he really? Yeah. Andy Duncan was the Bull Run oh, wow. Rally founder yeah. and TV producer. So he was here yesterday, yeah. and we were discussing back in the the... the 
the yeah. reduction of people in like media and PR and like that goes back to the Bull Run 06 mm-hmm. rally is like a lot. It's like Rob Ferretti, me, yep. you, Vinny, JF. Um, JF. There's like a, a lot of like it has expanded from there. It's pretty wild. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, wait, wait. So when did you start working for Porsche? It's actually, I just celebrated my anniversary a week ago. It's been five years. Nice. Yeah. Did they give you diamonds? <laughs> you know, I, apparently I was supposed to get a pin. I haven't gotten it yet. Uh, I'm excited it because diamonds on it? there's a ruby in it. Sweet. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I made sure to say, do I get my pin yet? Yeah, and they all, they have an optional one with no ruby, but it costs more actually. It's lighter. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a, it's lighter way. I think yeah. 25 years you get carbon yeah. Kevlar or something. Jenny yeah. gets to Paper. spec her own demos every six months though. That's I not do. so bad. Uh, that's a good deal. That's yeah. a good deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good deal I'm just there. trying to be like Jeff. This guy shows up on a new car every time I see yeah, I feel so like Jeff I'm just hooks trying to be like or, Jeff. An, or an old car, old car usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, can I talk about your can, your last canoe trip? Yep. Because oh, I saw you yeah. the last time I saw you was before your canoe trip. Yeah, yeah. So you tell everyone about this canoe trip that is a regular thing for you. <laughs> well, hey, last time I was headed like uh, out to Willow Springs for one thing, and then literally from Willow Springs to Colorado with a, with canoe, a canoe on, on the, the roof. top mm-hmm. of a 1953 Porsche. <laughs> nice. And you know, is the, your Porsche double digit VIN? How uh, low is it? It's low in the 53s, but it's not a split window, okay. so it's a bent window. But it's still an early 53. And the the funny part is it's got the bias belt tires on it, so by, so literally they're that wide. They're like three inches wide. Is it just for authenticity? Uh, yeah, because I like to drive it as it was in the day. It has no gas gauge. It has no side mirrors. No gas gauge? Yeah. No. Is it a light that comes on when it's no, like no, low? I, or you no, just, you got what? a stick. You got a stick in the... In the uh, trunk and you literally drop the stick in and it tells like you how many. Like you're checking your oil? Yeah, yeah, and oh, you, it's wow. a wooden stick. Hard to do while driving, right? Yeah, hard to do while driving. So the deal is every three hours I get gas Yeah. because you're ready to get out of it anyway. Yeah, three, But yeah. the funny part is I'm driving with a 16-foot canoe, which is, you know, basically a foot longer than the car, two feet longer <laughs> than the car. Amazing. So in Utah, I get caught in these crosswinds. It's like a seal. And there's nowhere an to go. Seal. And I am driving like with a full half turn <laughs> in the steering wheel going straight. And every once in a while, the wind would stop and you'd be like <laughs> <laughs> that for about 20 seconds <laughs> trying to figure out where if the center was. If there's no again. wind, does it stabilize yeah, you? it's good. And it actually doesn't affect the gas mileage too much. The canoes, so here's like the most basic Porsche possible. And it's a 33 pound carbon fiber canoe on the roof of it. So. It's like the highest technology mm-hmm. canoe. It's like 60 horsepower? Yeah, yeah, at, at sea level and most of my driving. So once I get to Colorado, we go canoeing virtually every day there when we're there. And it's uh, our canoe rack is that car. So it goes so, everywhere. You made Gosh, a weird so like crazy. LMP1 car, you know? It's yeah. got like the wing connected. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It it's straight. <laughs> exactly. So it definitely well, like, wants to go straight. I know. I sail. Do you do you sail at all? Uh, a little bit, but so, not really. So, you know, a canoe is very similarly shaped to a keel yes. on a boat. <laughs> and it's one big keel. Yeah. But, uh, and if you have a keel, but without a sail to work opposite it, yeah. you've got a, re- a real problem. Yeah, That's no, real, no, a real pretty, pretty funny. And, and, and it's, it is really when you're on the water if it gets windy yeah there really isn't a keel on it so yeah. you're just like moving around and I generally have like a 90 pound dog in the front of it and cru- cruising along in the canoe and I was working for Porsche Motorsport at Pikes Peak so I went over Independence Pass four times in one month which is 12,095 yeah. feet so the motor's probably got in the high 30s horsepower low 40s so it's it's pedaling pretty do hard you up like, there do you have like no compression left after a trip like that I mean you just on the floorboard the yeah, entire time. Yeah, you're pretty well flat out. It, there's an interesting equation that if you think about it, I figured this out. Uh, Rod Emery has a camp out in in uh, Oregon, mm-hmm. so he occasionally does this camp out, and it's an epic camp out, and it's kind of like you're very fortunate to even get invited to it. So I drove. I've never from even Co- heard of. This. I drove to Colorado. Super secret. I drove from Colorado to Oregon in it. I'm going across Idaho. The ga- the um, temperature gauge in the car has not worked since I've had it. I've had it for. T- you know, since 2003, I've driven 65,000 miles in it. That's but awesome. Gauges. But it's a good thing the gauge doesn't work because I would pull over because yeah. it's it's definitely hot. It's 110 degrees. I'm in Idaho Falls going along. And I realize because when you're spending all this time in a car, you can start to calculate it. So the red line in this car is basically 4,500 RPM. Okay. Is, there, I, is there a rev counter? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there and is. when okay. I'm driving... 
the car at, at speed going across in these long trips. It's running about 36 to 3,700 RPM. Okay. Okay, so equate that to a modern car. We're in a GT3 yeah. with a 9,000 RPM rev limit. That's like driving a GT3 at 74, <laughs> 7,600 RPM the all, all the time. day oh long, God, which yeah. you would never consider yeah. doing. But that's the equivalent. It's like you have a GT3 and you only have th- yeah. up to third gear yeah. and that's it. Yeah. You're tapped but out. That's, yeah. that's, but the equivalent of how hard yeah. that engine yeah. is working is like that. You would Yikes. never imagine doing that at a GT3, but that's what yeah. I'm doing all day long in that car. And so. in 65,000 miles, how many times have you rebuilt that engine? None. But Zero? I did the tra- wow. transmission once. Did transmission once, done the brakes a couple times, but the engine is still the engine. And wow. I bought it in a panic. You know, this is the car I bought for a Cayenne commercial because we lost the car we were going to rent. Wait, okay, hang on a minute. Yeah. Right, let's back this up. So you had a Cayenne commercial. Yep. You needed to rent a 356. Yeah, f- to drive in the snow. Okay. And at the last minute, the, o- the owner of that 356 said, no, we're not. <laughs> we're not doing it. We're not doing it. Okay. And I was in a panic and I went to European Collectibles in Costa Mesa uh-huh. there and I said, what do you got in the old 356? Guys, they're lovely, yeah. yeah. And I said, what do you got in the old 356? And they had this car that had just come in. I didn't, you know, it wasn't like I test drove it or anything i just needed it to move in the commercial <laughs> and i needed it like for tomorrow so i bought it and that's uh, hilarious it, I, and when i was driving it on the set shooting i thought this car is really pretty good and so <laughs> how anyway, many miles were on it when you bought it do you have any idea oh it was you know it's been around uh, <laughs> so it's one, yeah, of those, yeah. one of those is it, an, is it a matching numbers yes car? and or? it's a matching number car and the weird thing is the just a few a month ago, I went to get one of my cars detailed in uh, Newport Beach, and the guy at the detail shop goes, "Oh, I used to own your old car," and I'm going, oh, "Well, that doesn't narrow it down." <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, "You know the white, the old white Porsche." And I go, "The 356." He goes, "Yeah, I used to own it." And he goes, "You know, I actually." maybe didn't own it. I may have never registered it. I <laughs> bought it from a friend of mine who had ha- was the original owner. No way. I'm the second owner on this thing. No way. And then oh, the weirdest wow. part is that if you're familiar with that car, I'm always driving with a U.S. Armed Forces plate on it. Yeah. Uh-huh. It always has this military, like you would have when you were in Europe. Yeah. And I knew in the paperwork that I'd seen it was registered to a lieutenant colonel, you know, and it, like I had some receipts from San Diego saying lieutenant colonel. Mm. It turned out he took delivery in Europe. Oh, it's awesome. Of the car, so it would have had one of those plates on it, which is just a weird, weird deal. So anyway, funny small world. Yeah, yeah, but it's an awesome car. And we did you get to actually get connected with the owner? No, the owner's gone, and that's how he ended Mm. up with it. But he thinks that the widow is still alive. So I'm trying to work on that. But the car is it's just life slows down. You know how we dictate our speed everywhere? Yeah. You know, and we've got every car that will haul ass and go as fast as we want. That car dictates your speed. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you know, it's just like no air conditioning, your arms on the yeah, window, yeah. dogs in the back, wife's next to you. We're going canoeing. Yeah. You know, and it's just like however long you it's going to take. You have to be present. Yeah. 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 It's I really like good. that a lot. I just bought this Delica, a Mitsubishi Delica, oh, really? like one of those Japanese uh-huh. vans. It's like a Japanese yeah. synchro. Oh, wow. And I, I drove it for the first time and it really tops out around 70 uh-huh. it, you know what i mean and so you pretty much have to do the same thing like yeah. life moves yeah. at this pace yeah, now. that's, it. that's so, it wait can the so the canoe who makes the canoe uh that's made by swift canoe and kayak in uh in canada carbon fiber and uh, you'll love this mm. so they've been really into it because i've done a lot of postings yeah. with, uh, with they must car. love yeah you. they love all this you're stuff not, and you're I've not got, sponsored by them well i've got a cool little film coming out with them and i said you know i really want to get another canoe and i said but i want to just spec it completely the way mm-hmm. i want it and so they're they're going oh that'd be great so the first thing i do is i send them a picture of a pagani <laughs> and a bugatti <laughs> and i said i want you to see something and they get these pagani <laughs> and bugatti and they're going well, what's this about i go well look at it i said they're red but that's red carbon Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! You so, want to tint the so carbon? So I want to yeah. have them tint the carbon, yeah. make me a red canoe yeah, out yeah, of yeah, carbon yeah, fiber. Yeah, That'll yeah, be yeah. That, I'll be I'll be really stylish. Have you seen that. the uh, the Koenigsegg where they weave the gold oh, fiber oh, yeah. into yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I went over there. I was in Angleholm with JF when they were building that oh, thing, really? and I'm sure he doesn't care now. But Christian was like. Don't tell anybody I'm doing this, <laughs> <laughs> Christian. Because he, he was like, he was like, do you know how hard it is to get the weight out of this car? Yeah. And this guy wants me to put gold in the, in the body work. Oh, that's he's awesome! Like though. it's so heavy. Yeah. He's like, Where do I find the six kilos to cut from somewhere else? It was very uh, funny. Very funny. How, yeah. how did you get into canoeing? Um, literally, I that was my family's sport. I really? still have our big aluminum Grumman canoe. Uh-huh. 
from 1964 when I was I a kid. I learned on one of those yeah, at camp. Yeah. I was canoeist of the year really? at Camp Juan Posse. My J-stroke is dope, <laughs> son. <laughs> My J-stroke is a tricky I love, one. No, I, I'm asking because yeah. I love canoeing yeah, and I, I haven't done it in so long, but yeah. like, I'm so excited that you're a canoe enthusiast. <laughs> no, it's fun. And, and, you know, being carbon fiber, I can take it in the ocean. I can do all, you know, I can go everywhere with it that I couldn't with the aluminum yeah. canoe. And then the cool thing is it only weighs 33 pounds. It's 16 Whoa. feet, has a yoke. I hike into lakes, Carrying mile, two miles into lakes. I hike, there's gonna be a little film out this fall. I hiked over 12,000 feet with the canoe on my shoulders, go canoeing. And you know, you're up there on the on a 16 foot canoe. Dude, you're a boss. You fig, mm-hmm. But you figure, nobody's ever canoed yeah. on this lake before. So, yeah. so it's been kind of my new quest. And, and when you meet hikers going the other way, it makes an impression. Yeah, and they're like sweating and you're carrying a canoe. Well, it looks like, oh. so wild because it's 16 feet, so it looks like it's just a monster. Yeah, how but does the, that, does it go it, over your head? Yeah, and it's got a carbon fiber yoke in it wow. and you just put it on your shoulder. Like a Hans it. device sort yeah, of thing, yeah, right? Exactly, yeah, wow. exactly. And so oh, that's the, the spar and cross is actually got the cutout for your neck and so that's the way it is in there. Dude, so, wow. what was what would it take to have Jeff Zwart put together a like por- safari Porsche canoe trip? Oh, yeah. Okay, dude, I would be so about that. We, we might start can planning we, that. Is there is can we go somewhere closer than Colorado to start? <laughs> well, I did Mammoth uh-huh. uh, two years ago in the fall and did Convict and did uh, did five lakes Mono Lake. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you know it's always howling wind on Mono Lake. I was out there one day when it was a glass and you go through all the tufas, all the you know yeah. the formations there on the canoe. It's magic. It's if so you go, cool. If you work out a lot in hotel gyms, they have the Mono Lake. Lake and they have all these lakes in those hike, yeah. the hike programs yeah. and you're on the elliptical and it simulates <laughs> going up the hikes. I've only ever seen it in an elliptical machine. Oh, okay. well, you need to see it from a canoe. <laughs> so, I'm, I we could want do a to, mammoth though. trip. We could do a mammoth we could, trip, definitely. If we could arrange with this canoe manufacturer to loan us some canoes. Okay, hey. Hey, Swift canoe they make, out there. Do they make the rack, too, for the car? No, I had to have that custom made. Oh. Reese Millen made it for did me. Yeah, yeah, name yeah, so drop. Definitely good. <laughs> <laughs> did you, so we know it's did good. you test it in like a 4G slide? <laughs> well, what we <laughs> had to Reese. do was build rails, because no matter how much I strapped it down, it would always start shifting. And once it started shifting, it'd be diagonal. Oh, my and God. It would be the full lock. So he built uh, these little rails that it Bro, sits in. Bro, when you get some oppo in your canoe, <laughs> yeah. it's a little fucked. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. But, That's awesome. That yeah. should... That really should be in an ad for something yeah yeah well we're, we're working on it so it's good where do they make those things canada in canada just outside of toronto mm. Mm. bamf can we yeah. go to, can we get canoeing and zach was I just was there was last week. In bamf bamf like three days awesome. ago yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it was, it was Amazing. stunning you just got to go to the lake that not everyone's at you know <laughs> yeah. we went to the, the busy one but yeah. um canoe question the stronger <laughs> person was in the front yes and the uh weaker person was in the back will that cause the canoe to turn all the time or was our canoe bent you want to have the stronger person in the back. Can That's do the that guy wrong? who steers. Yeah. So and so usually it's like me, then Jezebel, our big Bernie's mountain dog, and then Terry up front, and then it's perfectly balanced. And when I go in the ocean, you turn it around the other way, and when it's just me and Jezebel, and you because you want to move forward because if you're just sitting in the back then the front you're gonna the bow's out of the water so you're not going you sit anywhere. kind of in the center okay. when you're in yeah the you want to be yeah. more centered too yeah. especially when you have a 90 pound dog with you yeah <laughs> she good, she's good on the she's water she's really good she but she it. wears a life jacket just in case because yeah, I don't want to do dealing with her <laughs> that other at the PEC at that Cars and Coffee like with two weeks ago yeah. whatever it was when I guess one of your other cars is in on display yeah. in the museum yeah. and you brought her and she just the dog just ran in and jumped right in that car <laughs> she's like I want to be in this car yeah. this is my safe spot it's like her car and there's a picture like on the display stand next to her that's like she's there and then you look up and the dog like, you're like fuck that's realistic that's yeah. fucking scary it's better than the wax museum yeah <laughs> speaking of which what's going on with the curation at PC, Jen can we with talk about that yeah, yeah you said well, there's like curated shows and stuff that's going on now there is and very special thanks to Jeff because we always have one of Jeff's cars in our gallery the permanent Zwart collection yeah, I know Shh, we don't talk about it yeah <laughs> it's not the Zwart wing of the PC no. yet <laughs> no well we laughed because today's like I'm running out of cars for you <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to recycle if you're on one a month you're gonna <laughs> yeah, panic buy a new yeah, 356 yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> <laughs> well you can have mine in October if you want it yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. We we're definitely looking forward to having. We're gonna have his safari car out on display. Awesome. 
awesome. I need to make some mm-hmm. broom anyway. <laughs> clear, clear some things out. <laughs> Says yeah. the guy who's building a storage. Everyone I keeps know. saying that, but it's not done yet. <laughs> okay. I'm, in, I'm, in, I got, I'm like double booked in press cars in October. We need to make oh. we need to clear some things out. Well, you can be my go-to because we're always sourcing cars. So mm. since we started Morning Shift this year, it's the first Saturday of every month where we do a cars and coffee event, but we call it Morning Shift. We're always working with local community members and local uh, influencers and people that are good advocates for the Porsche Experience Center to come, but we also like to put their cars on the gallery. So people like yourself, like Rod Emery, who's been a huge, huge ambassador for us. Jeff, of course. Um, we've always got some good collector cars coming through, but we like to change it up because there's people that are always there at the PEC and we don't want it to always look stagnant. So yeah. we're moving things fluidly. So my car will be there eventually. Yeah. For something. Your safari car. I like that. That show is great. That Thank show you. has a lot of things I like about uh, a certain cars and coffees, like clean bathrooms. <laughs> this is true. The coffee's yeah. always mm-hmm. ready on time. Mm-hmm. And Gour- gourmet restaurant. <laughs> see this thing Zach is showing? That that video might as well be taken from my car as I drive by <laughs> all of those people. <laughs> drive right in first. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things. No, no, it's it's like to have a cars and coffee at a place where like they own the lot is very mm-hmm. important. It's nice. And there's a billboard on the side of the 405 for it. Yeah. Who approved that in your budget? (laughs) Me. That's awesome. (laughs) With Jeff and Rod's car, mine's like just a shave in the background, but you can see it. Does the PEC actually own that billboard? So, yeah, it's ours for the next 36 years. Really? Uh 36 years, huh? Yeah. Well, we lease the land, so yeah. Score. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's pretty yeah. cool. I actually was driving down there and I was like, that's a billboard for a Cars and Coffee. Wow. I've never yeah. read that. Yeah. That kind of, that's like seeing a billboard for weed for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of, it's a little bit, it's a little bit special, yeah, but we want to make sure shadows. everyone knew what it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's all makes and models. So we're looking forward to having your Lamborghini there, which you said you're going to be bringing by. Yeah. When's the next course, one? Sem- the 7th? September the 7th of 7th? September. Yeah. I'm going to bring it then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Weekly Lamborghini exercise day. Good. <laughs> bring all your Very eight Lamborghini Union friends. <laughs> we don't talk. First rule about Countach yeah. Union is we don't talk about Countach Union. <laughs> yep. Um, should we get sad? Should we make it sad? Ah. We have to talk about Jesse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jesse Combs died yesterday, but we heard about it. I heard about it at six o'clock this morning. Uh, yeah. Someone actually sent me that the news article that like didn't name her. Yeah. But it, oh. but you they, knew. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I'd never even heard of the desert that, they, that she was on. Yeah, in Oregon. In Oregon? Yeah. Have you been, yeah. had you been out there? I've not been there, but I'd heard that because they'd been there before. So, so she was a friend. She was on our show um, twice, three times maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, she ruled like just the coolest. Like I was actually shocked when I didn't really know how old she was. I was shocked when mm-hmm. she, to find out she was 36. I was like, she lived a hundred years in 36 yeah, years. That's sure. like, unbelievable. Like builder racer every fastest woman on four wheels and just a great example and and, and someone who inspired a lot of people Mm -hmm. yeah like so many so many women yeah and uh and like she like won king of the hammers and like was on mythbusters and like she was like a huge advocate for i don't know like just doing so many things like she did so many things with her life and with racing and building and all this stuff but i think what what I noticed is that she did it all with just like a big smile and, and and she didn't, she cracked open a lot of doors and like ceilings and stuff, but she wasn't like brusque about it in any way. Mm-hmm. It was just like, hey, I'm really good at this. Other women should do this too. You should you should try this. Are you interested in building things? You mm-hmm. don't be intimidated by it. And she was a huge advocate for all that stuff, but in a, in a way that everyone just wanted to be your friend. Yeah. Um, she's just one of the best people. I, I totally agree. And she was a real deal. I mean, yeah. she didn't, you know, she could really weld. She could really yeah. build things. She could really drive. It wasn't just for show. You yeah. Know, it was, she was a genuine, she was just, and I think that genuine nature came across so well totally. with her that she had such creds when she spoke and she really could inspire people from that position. So it was, uh, you know, it's just, uh, losing anybody is a tough deal, mm-hmm. but that's that's a big yeah. Thing. You're turning you're turning airplanes into cars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I that's mean, a tough one. That is like that is a dangerous pursuit. Pretty man. unforgiving. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and she like when she when we when I would talk to her about that kind of stuff. Like I didn't I didn't know her that that well, but I'd always see her at stuff, and mm-hmm. you you know she had like the best smile and yeah. like, best energy, and like she I was like so. 400 huh <laughs> you know yeah. and, she's, and she was like 
didn't really seem intimidated by that kind of stuff where it's like you're you're you can see the earth bending uh yeah yeah you know what i mean there's no, there's like so little room for error at that at that i mean i don't i don't i'd actually i don't know what caused the crash but yeah but, I, but at going 450 miles an hour yeah. caused the crash yeah you know and I mean? at but that speed you just can't be protected there's yeah. no you're, way so you're kind of a passenger i mean mm -hmm. really right i mean yeah. you you hold it you hold it straight and you, you know but if you if you lose it like pfft. yeah you're in god's hands so, so extremely sad yeah uh, it is. i don't know how like i don't have a whole a whole lot like more but like god what a f you know she was either this going to this was going to happen or she was going to be Denise McCluggage mm, yeah, in yeah. like a scooter yeah. like and then you know getting out of like a, a rascal and into a fucking yeah. race car yeah. you know at a, at a hundred years old or yeah, you know I agree those were the two options it mm -hmm. sucks that it was this one yeah mm -hmm. but like god she went hard at the paint didn't she yep she went hard at everything hmm. so I guess R.I.P. Jesse. I don't. I don't have one. I don't, I don't yeah, know I don't know. I mean, I think uh, there's a lot of people that comment on like my Instagram of their, you know, their daughter was really inspired and everything. But I think she left a lot of content, which sounds weird to say, but like you can keep being inspired by her because there's plenty of examples out there. Like watch her videos, look at her posts, mm -hmm. all that stuff, and keep inspiring like daughters, sons, whatever. Mm -hmm. If you want to build something, raise something, like you can keep looking to those examples. Yeah. 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 There's really just not that many women in motorsports in general, or at least women that have respect within the industry. So I think that's really probably tough. I mean, obviously it's hard hitting with anybody. I mean, you look at Scott Speed, he just broke his back two weeks ago, was it? Oh, that crash. Was yeah. Brutal. Yeah. Uh, but just things happen all yeah. the time and you just take, you don't really necessarily take it into account until something like that happens. But mm -hmm. I mean, when you texted me this morning, I didn't know. And I was looking up online and I said, I cannot believe she's 36 years old. Yeah. I mean, she Lived did so much yeah. Yeah. in her age. Yeah, like, oh, wow. I mean, our oh, hobby, our hobby and passion is a dangerous one, you know. And yeah. I think like a lot of life and cars have gotten so safe that the, the when accidents happen, it kind of stands out more yeah. than it did probably in like the seventies and eighties. But uh, we just kind of have to remember, like, oh yeah, the stuff we like to do. Pike's yep. Peak, yeah, yeah, is yeah. really you know Jeez. you've done that ne We're, numerous times. Yeah. It's very we dangerous. We lost Carlin right. Dunn this yeah, year. Yeah. Who, Carlin oh, yeah. was our gladiator. I always thought, you know, nothing could happen to Carlin. And, you know, that incident uh, probably affected me more than anything in motorsport that I've been through, just because I was, you know, I knew him. It was the first time I lost somebody I knew at an event, you know, in that way. But it just, uh, it just reminds you that, you know, whatever shells we put around us, we're still really fragile inside and out was a situation where again it's just hard to protect somebody on a motorcycle at Pikes Peak but uh, it's it's a sad whenever we lose mm -hmm. them and uh, it's sadly part of our motorsport too so mm -hmm. do you think doing Pi something like Pikes Peak as just a recreational like pursuit you know what I mean like just I I like I like the idea of a hill climb I like I like my sports car. I can put a roll cage in it. I can get a comp license. Like, I'd like to do that, but I don't. I don't need to go for that last one yeah. percent. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. it still like worth doing and rewarding? Uh, I mean, I st I still love it. And the good thing about Pikes Peak to me, and you know, I also coach the club sport, mm -hmm. the GT4 club sport class, is nobody's you're racing against the mountain. Mm. You're not racing mm. anybody else. And there's not gonna be any other competitor diving under you, outbreaking you, yeah. or intimidating you in the typical road racing way. So you can kind of choose your own pace. Obviously, no you want to deliver. No one's even really watching you for yeah, most of you, it. You yeah. want to deliver, but you know, there is that self-preservation that can take over without getting in the way, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of thing. But you know, you have to face the fact that at any point along Pikes Peak's road, 12 and a half miles, there's thousand foot drop offs mm -hmm. and you know, something breaks on the car or whatever happens, there's, there's gonna be consequence no matter what there. And I, as I tell my whole group of GT4 drivers, you don't spin here. Yeah, yeah. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. you don't get away with that. I, I sat, uh, fortunately, a couple of my guys have have <laughs> survived spins yeah. and stayed on there, but that's so rare. It's generally, you're off into a heap into the rocks mm -hmm. or over the edge and mm -hmm. neither one's a good option. Cause like if, you know, 
I go out and I drive our the Angeles Forest, yeah. right? And and not at a race car pace by any means, but you know, quick by most mm-hmm. people's standards. And and I don't see the cliffs, yeah. but they're there. Yeah. You know, they're there. There's a, there's a bunch of big ones there. Yeah. You know, and and if your brakes fail mm-hmm. or if you blow a tire or if something, you know, if you're not paying attention or there's a rock or whatever, yeah. you could have a real bad day with with no oh, cage yeah. or anything like that. But I'm wondering, like, put me in a cage, put me in a in a in a race car, and you know. And say, okay, there's no police, there's nobody coming, yeah, you know? Yeah. I'm wondering how hard I, I would be able to, to push. Yeah, you know? That's why the race car drivers have the race car driver thing. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. And I think at Pikes Peak, it's all about confidence and not overdriving it. You want to be not reacting to it. You want to be proactive in your drive because mm. there's no room to react. And I think that's the thing that I always teach in my coaching there with the club sport classes it's it's a build it's a pace that you keep building on because if you're getting behind the car you're not learning anything there's 156 turns to learn Mm -hmm. you know this is like driving nurburgring in the test week it's like driving nurburgring three times and then starting a race you know it's that little practice Mm -hmm. on the whole place Uh, so when you have that little time you just have to do a good build all week long and i tell the guys i want to see every run faster than the last one you know how you do that by holding back in the beginning (laughs) because if you go flat out on the first one you're not going to learn the rest of the day because you're just all trying to beat that but if you Mm. keep building on it so that's you know the process there but like i said it is a unique event where you are racing against the mountain and i think that when you have confidence i've been there 16 years you know i don't think about what's over the edge i don't nothing you know none of that plays into my run i'm more worried is the car going to run right yeah and what are the real conditions here you know because mm. so often we leave the line and it's completely dry and it could be raining or hailing somewhere along the way it's it's such a living organism to race through but um it's a unique event because of that and you get one run there so mm-hmm. it's it's a big commitment and i like that kind of It's much like my television commercial world where you location scout, you build the storyboards, you put together the team, and then you get one chance to finish before sunset. Yeah, (laughs) Because you can't come back tomorrow. You can't go, oh, I missed a shot. I gotta come back tomorrow. We're shooting this at 7.47. Yeah, Yeah. so so that same kind of build and pressure of putting it all on the line Mm -hmm. for that one run on Mm -hmm. Pikes Peak is is kind of the same process I go through in filmmaking. Do you you teach clean or loose? Like loose or tight? Uh, Now that it's paved, it's- Very tight, right? Very tight, yeah. is it less fun now that it's paved? Oh, yeah, I love the yeah. I love the dirt days, and I think you know, you'll understand. It's kind of a different automotive dynamic now. We would rush a corner, rotate it in the dirt, and then drive on the throttle. So all the energy was released at the moment you went in the slip, right? You know, and then you drove on throttle on throttle. Now we're on racing tires. Yeah. <laughs> we run right up to the limit of adhesion, yeah. and when if you did realize you're in the wrong place you are going to then have to tighten or widen or whatever, but that action, if it creates slip, it's all the energy releasing right there with no room. Yeah. You know, there's no edges to have that take place. So that kind of dynamic in the car is so razor edge now where there used to be this slip, you know, you were sliding before you got there. Yeah. In the old it's days, like it so. shrinks the margin mm-hmm. a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it really does. How How has your mental approach to that changed over the years? You know, first year you go in and you're like, Oh, Holy yeah. shit! Like, ca- I mean, were you cautious? Like, do you have half of the race car driver kind of red mist brain, or do you approach it from a more methodical kind of? Uh, well, yeah, cause state? it's because literally in my first year with Porsche, which was 1994, I crashed on the first morning of practice because I thought I knew where I was. It was my second run, and I came into a section where it went the tr- road actually went 90 left. I thought around this blind corner, it opened up. I was pulling fifth gear. <laughs> I was, I, in, my, in my head, I was going on the straightaway, 550 horsepower, full boost, going, I was so convinced this sweeping left was just gonna open up to a dead straight road. I pull fifth gear, I'm thinking in my head, this is the earliest I've ever gone in the fifth gear here. <laughs> I am ruling this. And then literally, as soon as the road reveals to you, like instantaneously, it goes 90 left. Oh no. Oh. And you know, I left the road. And fortunately, I left the road, I hid high up in the trees, so the trees kind of folded back, it kind of softened my hit. But did that you one bend, moment, you bend some yeah, down? Yeah. <laughs> and I slid down the face of it, bought oh on the gosh. chassis first and landed on my side and but that literally that incident to this day I still remind myself coming in there where I am but that incident kind of made me 
approach it just yeah. like I described is Reality you got to do a build you got to do a build you got to I got to go from there and it, in in those days cuz remember when I first went there there's no in car cameras there were no sims there was nothing so I you really didn't have anything you could practice on or learn Did you just from. drive up and down a million times in a street car yeah, at regular you did. speed but I seriously w would contend and so did Rod Millen at the time you don't learn it in your first year but now when you come in after a sims and in car and all this I think you you know it pretty well now but the margin, like you said, a margin of error is mm. just you running a fine line in you, there. You know the course now, and you've practiced it in a sim, and then and then it's you come into it. And it seems like now your brain really has to get used to the consequence you're faced yeah. with. Yeah, and and you know it's like watching something and fast forward now, kind of because when I ran there in the dirt days, I was twelve and a half minutes plus or minus kind of for most of the cars. I mean, one year I ran a eleven forty seven. Now I'm one of the few drivers under ten minutes. And instead of seeing Full twenty percent, yeah. Speed, you know, and uh, instead of seeing geez. a speed, top speed of around one hundred and one, one hundred and two miles an hour, I'm one hundred and forty six miles an hour now. So everything is just like it's just yeah. happened so fast. And then you watch like Romain Dumont, the Volkswagen. That's that's and, just and, and, bananas. And it's literally crazy. like I press fast forward. His, <laughs> his Nurburgring lap yeah. was yeah. so yeah. crazy. Yeah, is that he was, human? That <laughs> no. was crazy. It is so amazing. And when I talked to him about Pike Peak, he said the hardest thing there's no sound yeah and you know and judging your speed yeah, entry speed. yeah. yeah. well that's and, the hardest thing about all electric cars yeah. is entry speed judging mm -hmm. without a gear and an rpm yeah. to be in yeah because yeah, i think like you say there's also a cadence when i race there it's like you know second mm -hmm. third fourth yeah. back third you're back, doing second. like you're a dance doing this yeah thing. and there you're just like golf cart you yeah. know just yeah. flat to i the mean floor. if you're so. if you're doing an endurance race around a racetrack and you're driving a manual gearbox yeah. like you're you repeat the same process over and over yeah. and like that's how you know how fast you're going you're not looking at the gauge so you take that away like yeah. when i drove a tesla on a racetrack like it's hard as hell to, <laughs> and to figure yeah. out your I went off a turn speed. in the uh, model three <laughs> performance yeah. Yeah. It's, first, it's first really hard. Out. You're you're the speedometer kind of lies to you, and yeah. it, you got no. It's it's weird. On the yeah. other hand, like on power, you can actually hear the individual oh, tire yeah. squeal. So that's mm -hmm. kind of nice to make that yeah. adjustment. Yeah. Did you see the taken lap? Uh, the I did. Yeah, lap? that was good. Were you involved in that? No, but Lars, a good friend of mine, Lars Kern drove it, and he's what I love is Lars is a young kid. I raced with his dad in Trans Siberia in the race from Moscow to Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, and go, safe. Yeah, so we we did that. <laughs> what could but, go but he would, but Lars was actually in that, and uh -huh. his dad was running the Cayenne program for Porsche, and so I've known him that long. And what I love is he's kind of become the Nurburgring expert, mm -hmm. and so he's jumping in all these cars to How make fast. How old is he? Like, oh, he's probably thirty-five, okay. you know, something okay. like that. But the his the the lap uh, the taken was a seven forty-five, five seven yeah. seven forty like seven forty, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah, fast. it's really fast and allegedly repeatable if you could yeah. recharge it fast enough. Yeah. Right, and, they, and mm -hmm. but his driving is very calm, and there's it doesn't. I mean, I know it's hard, but it doesn't yeah. look like he's doing a whole lot yeah. of work. Yeah. It's pretty impressive stuff. He did the GT2 RS right also, and he was considerably more busy in that <laughs> way. But, but still, he's good. He's really great. The busiest is like, do you ever see like the ZR1 in car labs? Like, <laughs> there, that dude's working. <laughs> that dude is working. Yeah. yeah, no, the the lap in the Taken was amazing. Yeah. I'm super excited about that. I am too. When are really? we doing ride-alongs at PEC, Jen? So we actually have 12 Tycons on order, but we won't have them until next year. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a black one on the 405 the other day. The one, yeah, they're covered, so you can't yeah. really. They're they're camouflaged. It, no, it wasn't. Way. I mean, the badges were covered, but it was black paint. Yeah, it was a, a full on undisguised distributor plate black taken. It was on the 405 right in front of the PC. <laughs> look at the. It does look like that, but look at we just put tape over the lights and on the back Whatever. lights, so you can't really totally see. Oh, I have see. no idea what the tail <laughs> light will look like. Fuck yeah, out well, of here. the kids press stuff. It looks weird in person. We had one at the PEC, and nobody realized what it was because it looks kind of like a charger in the back a little bit. But that's because we had disguised oh, it. I knew what it was immediately, and I yeah, thought well, it was lovely. Well, that's because you're Matt Farah, so you. Still <laughs> I mean, dude, long. I'm driving on the 405 in a Safari 911, and I see <laughs> yeah. in front of. In in front of a billboard Perfect. that says PEC Cars and Coffee every Saturday. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they, I look down, it's and next to me in the right lane, about to exit, yeah. is it taken? You know, oh, it's like four engineery looking people in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Germans. See, no, Germans. The, yeah. the car is absolutely amazing. I can tell you that much. The launch control on that car is ridiculous. The interior of the car is really nice. I know 
you've probably seen a little bit more than <laughs> you'll say or I let imagine on, you shot the uh, the catalog already, right? Or whatever. I d- no it's, comment. <laughs> it's crazy. And at the, the Experience Center, we got to actually test it a little bit. And we were testing it out to see what the car was like on the modules at the Experience Center because you know we're not a oh, race yeah. track, we're a development track. So when yeah, we they took call it them out, modules. It's not a bong; it's a water pipe, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a race track. It is a driver development track. Um, but the car did really, really well. And when we were on the low friction circuit, which you've been on, I love that. That, well, that car has so, so much horsepower. Fun. We couldn't even turn the PSM off. Oh, we had really? to keep it on. It, it had that much fun. torque. All right. Yeah, so we le- yeah, that car is amazing. It's that low be really friction fun. shit is fun. You, I You're spent good at that all too. day drifting a GT3 at six <laughs> miles an hour. That's yeah, awesome. It's all that whole that whole exercise is about finding the difference between zero and one percent throttle yep. and yep. using that. And they try and trick you. They try and make it hard. They go, "We're going to put in Sport Plus," and it's like, "No, no, put in Eco," <laughs> and then it's much so much easier. <laughs> it's way it's easier in Eco. Yeah. When, uh, I, when I go drifting, I don't put my car in Sport because there's Throttles all bouncing. It's, He's like, yeah, you just, yeah. No, no, you want to modulate? Yeah, I like dumb. That's why the air cooled 911s are great. You can be real yeah. ham fisted with it them. In there. Mm. Well, that's because now that I know what it's like to drive a safari on dirt. Yeah, I'm thinking oh, about yeah. like going up Pikes Peak in a rear wheel drive 911. Like, God, that must have been fun. It was fun running the Cup car in 2010. Mm. Oh my God, when it was half dirt, and I think that's when yeah. we first met. Oh. So uh, that's, that's was, that. That's that. The yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that the uh, next the car on the, the white left. one. Yeah, yeah the white one. Yeah, because that's when the track was half dirt and it mm-hmm. was just awesome so what tires do you run when it's a half rain dirt? tire a rain tire. Yeah, yeah so and it was cool because you'd run it on the pavement and be careful not to slip it too much so mm-hmm. it didn't ball up and then as soon as you hit the dirt you'd just rip on it to tear all <laughs> tear all the little balls off and, oh that's interesting and so, and turn it into a yeah, slick if it you went, can it's, yeah. you know it went pavement dirt Pavement, dirt, you know, it went back. Oh, and so oh, I didn't good. realize yep. it went back to oh, yeah. dirt. Oh, yeah. It oh. finished on dirt. And it was like, it was, it was definitely, you know, that was that, but that car with mm. the, it was the first sequential box I'd ever driven. And it was oh, just it like, be the best. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, I like joke when I say, I just want to sit in here all day and pull back. I you know, know, right? It's like so good. I drove that BBI, like the mm. one, the one, the, the street car yeah. where they built another the one of your engines version. in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And it was That's fucking crazy. bananas. Yeah. And it had the sequential yeah. in it. And it was the most fun thing oh, yeah. ever. Yeah. It, it was it the is. coolest. Yeah, you'd know. Is there any other events you can do today in America? Not that are the level of Pikes Peak, but that's a proper dirt hill climb like that? Mount Washington. Oh, the hell, east, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, How does that compare as a it's drive? It's much shorter mm-hmm. and rougher, you know, and narrower. Every, you know, it's it's much more kind of a Stage primitive rally. feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stage. But but it's still a great hill climb. The unfortunate thing is they've always scheduled it right around the same time as Pikes Peak. Well, that's so you had stupid. No, yeah, I had no option to mm-hmm. run both. And, Who thought that was and, a good idea? I know. And, but I've always, when I had the cup car, I was like, oh, I just want to run the cup car on Mount Washington. You you know, so. it's the same thing with Detroit and the Woodward Dream Cruise. Like, yeah. I get that you got this rivalry set up, but you realize people would come to both. Yeah. You <laughs> could make more money. You just have to not be complete boneheads yeah. about this. Yeah. Because I, I, you can't go. When the last time you went to Dream Cruise, right? Because compared to Pebble, who's going to go to Dream Cruise? Yeah, but Pebble's now mm-hmm. a Dream Cruise. True. <laughs> it's changed a what lot. A shit show, right? That was, a, that was embarrassing, I thought. It was so. pretty, it, it like... What happened up it's there? Like I don't know what happened. It's it's it like changed so quickly. Like I was staying in Pebble Beach. It was like staying mm. on a racetrack at night. You could hear the Molson Strait, <laughs> and you know you would. I I'd, I'd be there in the backyard of this house we were renting, and you would hear first gear, second gear, well in the third gear. You know that's over a hundred. Yeah, like where? And they're inside <laughs> Pebble Beach. Crazy. And you know everybody's hearing it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how it happened. So are they just making too many supercars? <laughs> <laughs> you can it's kind of like cars and coffee. You know, it's like yeah. everything is is uh, changing. I think they just need you need to find a new you know a a new format to mm-hmm. it or whatever. And it's natural that people are uh, you know gravitating towards newer things. I, I totally get that. Well, it's but, easier to live with yeah, them and, yeah, and all it that. It is like, for sure. But it's it was you definitely felt like just. The whole vibe of the place go, had changed oh no. a lot, especially in Carmel that one night when it was like everybody doing oh, donuts. J- and dude, JF put that yeah, video. Yeah, on. Yeah. That yeah. video was horrible. That video was crazy. I, I drove the through the other direction in a seventy nine eleven. I thought I was in a mosh pit. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it's wild, yeah. right? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, like, was, cars are too, too. I don't know. No, but, I don't know what it is. But like, the I mean, Yeezys I love cars. Have, the yeah. Yeezys have arrived. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would you would say that about SEMA, but not about Monterey Car Week. When I yeah. hear that, it's like, what happened? No, Vegas is different. Yeah, but I you wanted, can expect I, that Friday it in Vegas, of SEMA, not at Monterey Car Week. That's old no, money. There's that's, nothing like that Friday of SEMA when the cars are oh, leaving. Yeah. That's the yeah. best. Yeah. When like a third <laughs> a third of them break down in the parking lot, <laughs> yes, all the rest of them hit the strip and do burnouts. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so. Yeah. No. no. Well, they definitely had every police officer on yeah. duty on, in Carmel yeah. that night. You wonder so. what's going to happen like yeah. next year. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. They're going to have to crack I, down I, on I, that. Even though it was a shit show, I still kind of feel like I missed out by not going. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Like, part of it's like, you oh, can, what a shit show. The other part of it's like, it, what it's a like, shit show. <laughs> it's like Woodstock. Were you there the year they burned the bus? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Sure. You want to be there yeah. for the disaster. Yeah. I know. Is there a, like, the internet exposes every person to everything basically so now you have people that are that are into car culture that may not have known about uh, car week or what it was or what it was for mm-hmm. and they see it like oh we want to go be part of that we want to go see all these exotic cars and stuff but they they're 22 or whatever and they come in like I'm gonna do a break stand yeah, everyone's watching yeah, me like right. I want to get on Instagram and stuff but we like burnouts like we like you like yeah, driving yeah, yeah. and stuff so I don't know, it's, it's like a world's colliding. Is it this thing of like, oh, this isn't the atmosphere for that? Like kind of know, know your environment? Yeah. The, the, the hard part, I think, is modern cars' limits are just so high. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, if you were yeah. in a Bugatti Type 35 and you wanted to do a burnout, you'd be doing 15 miles an hour. But you'd If someone a shut down an intersection yeah. in a Type 35 <laughs> and did donuts, <laughs> I'd be like, all right, yeah. cool. <laughs> this is what this is now. It's just, but now yeah. it's like, you yeah. know, traction control, launch control, everything that's in there is just like. Yeah. It, How do I activate the fire tune, bro? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, when we, we were in high school, you know, the fast this car you could get for like five thousand dollars was like a Taurus SHO, yeah, or uh-huh. maybe maybe a, a busted up Corvette, and now it's like you can get an F body, yeah, for four grand, three oh, grand, I mean, and that's dude, a lot you, of power. You can get into a four thirty or a Huracan for mm-hmm. or, or, or a, a Gallardo for like seventy five grand, eighty mm-hmm. grand. You're you're, you're oh in yeah, a but I'm thinking like for, for think, not think much peak anymore. irresponsible, seventeen oh, years old yeah. with three thousand dollars, and you, you know mm-hmm. the power. Well, I just went to the, the Peterson Museum's like cruising, and I saw oh, like yeah. a high school kid in like a twenty. Oh, yeah. 13 you know it's at this point that's six years yeah, old the 2013 right. camaro with like a monster cam and a turbo on it. i was like <laughs> jesus what are you doing he's like yeah you know and just built this up and i was like how much does that make he's like 850 and i'm like how old are you he's like 17 i'm like jesus <laughs> <laughs> yeah. please don't die sir please yeah. i called the kid sir <laughs> that was a good show though peterson uh cruise in this year yeah i saw good. pictures this of week. it yeah it was so, big yeah it was big yeah. there was some fun stuff out there cool. people were bringing cool Stuff. They're doing cool. a good job. Mm-hmm. Um, we got some. I'm sure we have a million questions from people, right? Oh no, we don't. Okay, well, get in your super chat if you want, because we'll do this. <laughs> I will say that you know, like you mentioned, uh, uh, construction of the Exper- Porsche Experience Center, and yeah. I remember visiting Jen in the you know the trailer there on the dirt lot the jinky trailer yeah is. and and the top you know, gear production could, office. You know, we kind of <laughs> like described you know like what this could be and. and you know, for me, one of the coolest things you can visit in the world is like to go on a Saturday from the Frankfurt airport and drive to Nürburgring mm. because it's like this Mecca. And as you get closer to Nürburgring, you know, there'll be something hauling ass Gets an Alpina a little, or a something. Fizzy, yeah. and, it, and it starts, the whole thing starts amping up and then you get off the Autobahn and you, you start down through the roads through, you know, a number of the small towns and there's bikes going by you, you know, the knee dragging and the whole thing, you know, it's just like, and it just is so amped up by yeah. the time you pull in the parking lot there. And then you pull in the parking lot and it's like the best cars and coffee you've yeah. ever seen, but all these guys are going to go risk it all yeah. on the next 12 miles. And on you the know? way you stop at YouTube corner yeah. for a little bit of the old <laughs> crashy, crashy. Yeah, but, but the <laughs> energy was just so cool. And it is a Mecca kind of thing. And we talked about back in those days of this is kind of Porsche's hub. Mm. And we're in already the epicenter of Porsche, you know, pretty much so in the whole United States in Southern California. And to think you've got this place that kind of brings all the dealers together, brings all the owners together. And the cool part that you don't really know about, it's not really the advertised part of the Experience Center, is literally the right side of the building, oh, Porsche yeah. Motorsport. And, you know, Porsche is about motorsport. I mean, it was founded on that. It was proven by that. There's some part of motorsport in virtually every product they make. And so here's all of motorsport. Everything that goes on in the U.S. is 
going through the right side of that building. Yeah, there's like three 917s yeah, over there. Yeah, so then to walk in, to have your experience on the track, have the Porsche racing department and the historical side of racing all displayed there and really being worked on as you go through it and having this quiver of cars of virtually every modern product they have, you really feel like this is not just a destination, but it reflects all mm -hmm. things Porsche at the same time. And I just think, it's amazing because when you say five, I, I didn't realize that it had been five years. It feels like 10. Yeah, but it just in a, such a short time, basically an old golf course yeah. has mm -hmm. become what it is. And I really think that when I drive there on the mornings for morning shift, mm -hmm. I'm coming from Orange County and think about where that is. It's about equal distance to Orange County, to Malibu, to the yeah. Valley. And I'm driving along and inevitably two or three cars go by me that are on the mission to go there. Mm -hmm. And and I think well, that's that's what Nürburgring's like, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And, and so I love that kind of energy as you get closer and closer yeah. to it. But it's it's just so amazing. And I think the, the feedback I get from people that I recommend to go there, they'll inevitably call me on the way home <laughs> or text me. And those, I can't believe I got to go as fast as I wanted. You know, yeah. it's kind of like it's not like Autopia, you know, <laughs> or something. This is serious stuff that you get to really yeah. demonstrate what they do. The track's very fun too. Yeah, it's a really fun yeah. layout for a circuit. I I got to I did the I guess I was the first person to do it. Where? You made up an advanced program that I got to do, which was really fun. Are people have people taken you up on that? Oh yeah, people doing it. We have a lot of people that have gone through that. That was a really fun program. You should leave <laughs> your wallet in a locker and don't bring it in the car because they'll <laughs> lose it for a week. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll have to get all new credit cards and then they'll find it just in time for you to activate yes. those credit cards. <laughs> uh, no, but I, we, I, had a, I had a great time and I basically had a full day private lesson and um, I got pretty good. I you did. You started pretty good. Right? I started okay, but yeah. I actually, I really learned the car mm -hmm. like that. I, yeah, I really got the, the, the 9912 GT3. I really learned um, the limits of who right. was my teacher, Jen? Do you remember? I want to say have, Kyle. Is that a, is that a was person? It Kyle Mohan. Kyle Mohan. The drift Kyle formula Mo drift? No, it wasn't Kyle Mohan. No. no was no. it Zach Anderson? No, I don't know. But he Sean was, Hayes. Sean Hayes. You had it was Sean, Sean Hayes, Hayes our and, he, deputy. and, and mm -hmm. he was fantastic. He was a great instructor. Right. Um, you guys are, like like so many instructors I know have gone through there. Yeah. And Do we have? Yeah, <laughs> we still with have pride. a good quiver. Of, we, we, yeah. Well, what's the most popular cars that people come and run? You know, so the 911 is our most popular. We have 64% of all of our bookings are yeah. actually a 911s or some variation of. Does that exclude GT cars? That or, doesn't. Yeah. Oh, so, so 911s including GT cars. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. well <laughs> most people want to go and see the iconic 911 or drive it. But I think the big difference between us and what you probably liked about and got the most out of was the fact that a lot of times when you go to a racetrack, like even Porsche track experience, you're getting a lot of the radio calls. So it's really about lead and follow, whereas the, the experience center, it's very different where you're in a car with a coach for 90 minutes and you're behind the wheel for, with that 90 minutes. So when we're looking at how you're looking forward and how far ahead you're looking and all the things that, you know, Jeff Zwart does on a daily <laughs> basis as he's with his cell phone taking videos of his dog and sending to, no, to I everybody. never do that. <laughs> <laughs> but you learn so much more than you would. So I think that that's a really good place to start is what we did with you is we took you through the advanced driver course. We wanted to get your feedback before we actually launched it to the public. So thank you for that because we good. launched it successfully and we've got a lot of people through it. You're um, welcome for that feedback. That's, <laughs> that's all what we do on all of our programs. So there's always a coach on the right hand. Um, the I just saw because Zach had your website up, and I, another good thing to note is you have a master the manual program. So you actually offer stick driving lessons, basically. So that is that is a little bit. I'm glad that you brought that up. It's not mastering the manual to teach somebody how to drive a manual. We want to make sure that you know how to drive a manual before you come to the experience center. Oh, it's like heel towing and race driving. It's really mastering the manual. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, heel towing is good. All right, mm -hmm. if you can make a car like go around, and you want to learn how to like be better, that's what that's for. Yeah, we're working on a special program right now, which we have not launched yet, but we're working on a program that's really going to take people to a next level in terms of the curriculum, where it'll be multiple programs in one, and that basically gears you up, like if you want to be a race car driver, or if you want to go to Porsche Track Experience, because again, we're not a race track, so we don't have the type of length where you can do passing, but you can r learn the correct lines, you can learn a lot of different things that you would need to know to go further in your race car career. Yeah, I mean, the definition between handling circuit and racetrack just means like you can't have actual races there, pretty much. 
But as far as like the experience, like it's a racetrack. When you're in the car, it's a racetrack. Yeah. You uh-huh. go as fast as you want. There's barriers and hills and corners <laughs> and curbing. Yeah. 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 And they have a, a knockoff yeah. carousel, which is pretty cool, actually. Yeah. That's pretty it's an fun. identical replica yeah. of the carousel. It's a 33% bank turn. And Excuse I will say that because me. in the construction <laughs> phase, we laid it down. Jeff knows this. We laid it down. And it was not exactly right. So as Germans do, it's not Porsche perfect. We actually took the whole thing up and redid it. So it is 33% bank and you can actually fill everything. (laughs) Do they put the awful bump in it? Of course. It has the, it has the bump in it's it. It's got the bump. So yeah, the bump you send people once a year to measure the bump in Germany over time and you can trust it. Yeah. Trust the only thing down. we don't have is the graffiti, thank God. Uh, yeah. Oh, we could fix yeah, we that. Can, we yeah. can fix yeah. that. Yeah. No, and I know, we'll and I send it to your place. Fuck. That's good. Uh, <laughs> That'd be his work work program. We put him in. He's going to go graffiti something else for you. Do you guys have 992s yet? We are getting the 992s. We should have them late September. So cool. oh, really? that'll be it. really cool. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. we're excited about that. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. I just got an invite to go to mm-hmm. Chamonix and yeah. drive a 992, actually, which is I'm pretty excited about. Good. And I have, a, I have an RS next weekend as well. I have the last 991... Wow. Point two press car. Oh really? Yeah, the That's white, never the white one. Okay, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, right. What we can have that? like got ten thousand <laughs> of the hardest <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know launch it, It's probably <laughs> very tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't care. I'm so excited. I don't give a shit. I get the eight twelve super fast this weekend. Oh really? Which wow. I hear is just a complete maniac of a car. Mm. I'm really excited about that. I bet. That's we'll sweet. have a it's good run. Good stuff. We That's got anything good. from the people, Zach? Just a couple? Just a few. Uh, oh, man. Murray wants to know, my first Porsche can only spend 20K. Oof. Oof. That's okay. That's a tall order. Where yeah. are you going? What are you spending 20K for a first Porsche? How old is he? Do we know? No. His name's Murray. He's got to be old. He's <laughs> not young. 996 Carrera? Boxster? Boxster I was going to say Cayman. Yeah, for Find sure. I would do a Cayman. Cayman would be mid engine, super reliable. If he's got a wife, she's gonna love the fact that there's two trunks. I always put that out there for the woman. Yes, there you, go. you can put your diamonds reliable. in your front in the front, <laughs> and then you yeah. can put your diamonds in the back too. <laughs> I mean, you can do a 911, but what do you think? Uh, that'd be a tough 911. Yeah, that would be a tough a 911. Yeah. For I mean, I saw Caymans you can get off of. You can probably get a good one for twenty six if he wants to go up just a little bit higher. Yeah, even on bring like a trailer. The, the I mean, I like the Cayman just in general, yeah. and I think that would be a good, better than a Boxster for me at least. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. roofs are good. Yeah, yeah. roofs are good, uh, <laughs> especially when you're learning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and apparently that roof is, is if it breaks, it's a real problem. Yeah, it's probably uh, more than a car. Yeah, right. Uh, Travisio says, "What newer cars do you think will age especially well?" Hmm. Ferrari four eighty eight. Mm. Those kinds. I mean, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, Range Rovers. The current Range Rovers are very nice looking. Those, I think, will age well. Anybody else? Hmm. That's a good question. Ford GT. Ford GT. I mean, Ford G- oh, one, yeah. Of course. That's yeah. a nice car. It's like cheating, but... <laughs> Slightly cheating. How about not the Lamborghini Urus? <laughs> <laughs> no, anything with that much surfacing, I think, will not age well. Last time we were here, we focused on the cup holders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> too small. Yeah. You can't fit two cups in the double cup holder. The 992 yeah. really has a cup holder. I know, the 992 has a cup holder. We had a whole conversation holder. about that. I know, a lot of people didn't like the pop-out from the dash cup holders uh-huh. that they've been using. Yeah, the handcuffs? I, the handcuffs. <laughs> that's very oh, that's funny. hilarious. I like the handcuffs, though. Yeah. Am I the only person that likes yeah. them? I think it's a good way to not have them there when you don't want yeah. them. Oh, it's good. genius, so, yeah. yeah. I like, my, this, mm-hmm. I like yeah. the center console being there. You know yeah. what I just got? Some guy made on a water jet machine this metal cup holder that slides into into my 87. It slides oh, wow. into the passenger oh, really? seat rail, and you yeah. just screw it down, and it's just a metal bring. Huh. It was great. It's yeah. like this is the simplest solution to this. I love it. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the future kind of thing of how you like cars is such a mystery to me because – when you think about how many cars we didn't like when they first came out, True. and now we absolutely love them. If it was kind of a yeah. failure when it came yeah. out. Uh, it's, like, it's weird, but it's like, did the designers just have great foresight, or did we just like lower our standards, or what, <laughs> what, happened, you know, what yeah. happened? So yeah, or, or in some cases, I think durability becomes a virtue. Yeah. Like, yeah. like they couldn't move Ford GTs for nothing in 05, right. Right. but then it was like, Hold oh, on yeah. a minute. You can triple the horsepower of these things yeah. and a stock bottom end. You can go almost 300. Didn't the guy go 300 in one? 
I so think so. Somebody yeah, went yeah, 301 yeah. on stock arrow. Right. Why, like, didn't, why didn't people like them when they came out? Because they're, they're beautiful. 150 they grand for a Ford? That's bullshit. Yeah. They like yeah. True, but yeah. I think aesthetically, if, if it's if this is which cars will age well, I guess, I don't know if I'm taking age to mean which ones will I still like looking at when they're mm-hmm. you know 30 years down the road. Yeah. Well, and it's also, I think, the modern, the more recent cars give the older cars sometimes the credibility. Yeah. And I think a perfect yeah. example of that in Porsche's world was when the 918 came out, all of a sudden benchmark technology cars with Porsche that were kind of forgotten, like Carrera GT and 959 mm-hmm. were suddenly on mm-hmm. the map, you know, like big time for collectors. And yet, you know, we were all focused on the 918s that yeah. were coming in, but those things kind of came along with it. And I think that for in the Ford GT side, I was just uh, with Alex uh, Justin Gurney when he had the new one mm-hmm. and his dad's old one with the bubble. Oh wow! And, the, you know, old, the old the, old, the, old the, one. The, huh? the, no, the, the, do you know that Ford built him? Uh, of the new GT in red and white with a gurney bubble. Oh, on the door? Yeah, wow. On the door, That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and he had that. So the second one came around, and uh, for, because the way the doors open, they couldn't do it as yeah, well. Yeah. But, but uh, they, they say that they may do a bubble on that one That's too. But you should cool. see those two cars, red with white stripes together. They were just at Cars and Coffee oh, I bet. last it's weekend. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. That new Ford GT is. Oh, have you driven awesome. it yeah. yet? No, I've not driven it's it. It's no. pretty crazy. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you dri- I, I had one day with one, really? and it's, it's very, very obviously a homologation race car. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've I, I made that. a lot of considerations for use as a street car of any yeah. kind. But I remember, it's bananas. I remember talking to Chip Ganassi at a race one time before it was coming out and he goes, you know, they this was built to the rules. Yeah. You know, and oh, by the way, we're going to make street cars. Yeah. You know, it wasn't the other way around, yeah. which is so rare in this world. Well, after the show, I will tell you my time from Newcomb's Ranch to the <laughs> Shell <laughs> Station. Oh, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was imagine. shocking. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I didn't good. get a racetrack, but yeah. I basically made one. I feel like we need to make a call to Graham Rahal and see if we yeah. can borrow his purple one. <laughs> Graham's cool. Graham's I, God, I owe him a call. He needs yeah. to come on the show. He should. He does. Would, I know, but he's hey, great. We were going to, and then like the racing season started, oh, and now he's who knows where. Yeah. <laughs> but he wants me to drive. He's got an NSX, I think, that yeah, he's tuned he up a little bit. Yeah. That's, uh, Graham's got a lot of cool stuff. Mm-hmm. He's so. got he's got a lot of hands yeah. and a lot of pies. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of That's good. He's a great guy. What is a GTA Spano, Zach? Why did you pull that up? Uh, someone someone wanted our thoughts uh, on it. What are our thoughts on? The, have you ever heard of this car, a GTA Spano? No. no. It's a little weird looking. Can we? I've never heard of it before. It looks like something out of a video game, honestly. <laughs> Where is it from? Uh, this is all in German. Maybe that's... Probably Germany. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. It's not pretty. I can say that. It's not a good looking car. Looks too tall. It looks like the uh, proportions Probably. are wrong. Yeah. Sorry, Trent. Not good. Uh, Brett wants to know... Hang on a second. Okay. He has a limited budget. He's got a 240Z on stock suspension. Should I get better springs and good wheels and tires or a good set of coilovers and get wheels and tires later? I say coilovers. Yeah. Jeff says coilovers. Race car driver says coilovers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Springs and not modified shocks is a bad combo. You don't want that. I will tell you what. I get asked sometimes like, oh, you know, so-and-so is making an exhaust system for my car. Uh, and this other, I have this other option, and they'll ask me, which one, which exhaust should I go with? And I go, well, what's your goal? Mm-hmm. Is your goal to go faster or make more noise? Well, yeah. of course they say they want to go faster. <laughs> so then I say, well, how much are you going to spend? And, and you know, these to change over this stuff, $2,500, yeah. $3,000 deal. And I say, go do a track day. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, driver Cause, mod. Because totally. really, you know, if you go do that, it's like you're going to be farther ahead than that exhaust system got you. Yeah, so, 100%. totally. Yeah, yeah. So Buy an exhaust if you want to change yeah, how the yeah. car sounds, and, but it's not going to make you much faster. Nothing beats time behind the wheel in yeah. any of these cases. So. I've been watching uh, Hyperdrive, uh-huh. Rutledge's uh, yeah. show on oh. Netflix. Did yeah, you catch I lo- it? I love Rutledge. Yeah. Have you caught the show? I haven't caught the show yet. I have to tell you, they've done a nice job, Good. and I don't like anything that anybody <laughs> makes. I think it's all garbage, <laughs> okay. but it's literally American Ninja Warrior for cars, so mm-hmm. it's pretty minimum with the fluff and the mm-hmm. fake drama. They built a really cool course they let people race it there's a nice variety of cars a nice variety of drivers and on the episode I just watched which is uh, episode 2 this Swedish chick uh, in her early 20s she's a truck driver she has a stock V6 Mustang with a cage and a handbrake Uh (laughs) and she beats a guy 
the whitest white dude ever <laughs> with a twin turbo oh, Huracan. Nice. Oh, and nice. he got beat. Okay, wherever hard. that girl Love is, it. she needs to come to the her Porsche Experience is, Center. Yeah. I will personally no, pay. Her name is Sarah Ho. <laughs> That's so Sarah cool. Ho something. Um, Ho, her last name is. Uh, I'll find it for you. But that is so yeah, cool. she ruled. That's awesome. And she could drive the shit out of that Mustang. Yeah. And she really embarrassed this guy in a twin turbo Lamborghini. Sarah Tadeo. No, 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 no. Sarah, it starts with an H. Sarah A Ho Ho something. Ah, uh, fuck. Whatever. We'll find hmm. it. Um. And in case everyone's wondering, she was cute too. <laughs> she was because <laughs> that's it. everyone at home. Just, just tell me if she's hot or not. <laughs> uh, Shannon, oh, liked my million mile Lexus. Sorry, yes, yeah, September issue of Road and Track, the million yeah. mile Lexus story. Oh, good. Is it? It's the one yep. with the Lancia Stratos on the cover. Go pick it up. Or get a subscription. It's going to be great. Uh, plans for a regular column at Road and Track? Not at the moment, but I will. Uh, I'm going to be part of the group for P Cody for Performance Car of the Year which we're doing at the end Very of September. Cool. I'm really excited. This is the, that's the first one of those big, other than the thing we mm -hmm. did for Drive, which is not really the same, that's the first one of the big um, like magazine super car, super car tests that I've done. And I'm doing all the videos. That's cool. That's so really I'm, cool. I'm doing videos of every car for, uh, for Road and Track, which awesome. will be really fun. That's good. Well, that's good. Uh, Jeff Phillips says, what, or Philippe says, excuse me, what are your main sources of inspiration and do you recommend any photography books not mm -hmm. car related or car related? Wow, wow. I guess that the inspiration side is to ch be challenged. You know, I just, I like that. And I think that, um, you know, I've, the good news, I tell clients a lot of times when I do television commercials, the good news is I've done this for a long time. The bad news is I've done this for a long time and I want to do something different. So I kind of always try to take, you know, outside inspiration and kind of maybe not pay too much attention to it, but use it as the seed for where I go with something. And I think, you know, like I had loved the whole drifting culture because, you know, the photographers that went to that, they're working at a fairground. Yeah. You know, it couldn't be more dismal if you looked at it on the surface, but when they threw the cars in there and then shot through stuff and mm -hmm. kind of played, it was like, it was like magical. It was yeah. so strong. And I think that was the thing for even shooting the movie Art of Racing the Rain. So I was the second unit director on that. I directed all of the automotive things, which meant I'd shot the opening title sequence. I shot, you know, all the racing stuff, of course. I shot Enzo's last ride in the vintage Ferrari and this moment of this dog driving around with with Milo driving and there were all these things but the challenge in that the, that was, fucking picture made me cry by the way yeah, but, uh, it made me rem it reminded me of like bringing my cat to be put yeah. down actually and I kind of cried a little bit yeah like but it, good, that, it was picture. it was it was even moving you know I'd, I'd come I'd be out on the racetrack I'm tilting up off the road surface come to this beautiful Ferrari 57 Testarossi you know running along there you come up here's Milo driving and you know it's just all heroic with him and then you'd move the camera over there's this dog riding in there yeah. head up high ears blowing in the wind I'm rolling in slow motion and it's like it's just kind of magic. It's like yeah. everything mm -hmm. coming together. And I think those moments of, for me, and especially with the support of Patrick Dempsey for it, because Patrick Dempsey was the executive producer on the film, you kind of wanted to up your game because I'm shooting this you know, quasi racing movie, shooting all the racing things for it. So you, I'm, I'm doing this for my peers, mm -hmm. the guys that I've been with, grown with, up with, raced with. I want to be you know want to make it good and i love that challenge i think that's you know if you ask what the inspiration is is really to be challenged and i think there's and you ask about books or things i find that there is i mean it takes time but just going through the internet seeing what it, um basically inspires you there there's so much cool stuff and you know i went through a period of time where every job almost i shot with a different camera <laughs> you know it's like the the everything's evolving so quickly mm. now that the drones are crazy you know we used to have the uh, i was shooting in an era where we had gasoline powered helicopters <laughs> yeah, yeah. that looked like a helicopter with some little tiny gunner 16 millimeter camera on the front of it and they'd start this thing up and everybody run the other way yeah <laughs> just like the november come. rain yeah. video <laughs> so, so it's just, you know, and now they're using these racing drones with you Dude, know, the headsets. guy who who's the guy oh, who works the for, uh, stuff. FPV. for drip. Yeah, yeah. FPV. FPV. What's so his name? Johnny. FPV, FPV Johnny. Johnny. Yeah, I mean, that guy. That wow. stuff. I look at it. I go, oh, this is mm -hmm. it. You know, it's like this is what I always wanted yeah. to do, and I was encumbered by all this heavy stuff, and this guy's just 
just killing it. This, here, look at this shit. Yeah. This guy fucking kills. This is from awesome. Long Beach, yeah. dude. He dives in from the apartment yeah. building. That's like that's like we Sick. could only hope to do as special effects just a right? few years ago, and that's the, what they're doing. In drifting. It's like a million yeah. bucks in CGI yeah, like exactly. eight months and ago. It's, <laughs> and yet it's all shot for real. And it's like, these guys are just doing it as routine. You know, yeah. this is something I'd be rehearsing for a week. Right. You know, with a regular. I just drum saw set. a, uh, you know, the band OK Go? Uh -huh, yeah. All their music videos, oh, yeah. those amazing Rube Goldberg music yeah, videos. Yeah, I actually worked with, uh, met with them in New York City to potentially do an automotive version of one of their no things. No way. Because yeah. cool. they were going to have an automotive sponsor in it and everything. But they're all, well, the, whole, the whole band is super into it. And his sister is kind of a real serious artist in it, too. So, so. She, she creates a lot of those yeah, things. Yeah. So so they, they've had two videos that I saw that were sponsored. One was a Chevy Sonic yeah, with yeah. the musical thing, yeah. and the other was they marched through the streets and they, quote, used the Land Rover Velar <laughs> GPS to track it. But uh, they, one of their videos I saw was a single take from a drone, and it was a three and a half minute, uh -huh. like, synchronized dance drone sequence that yeah. was crazy. Yeah. No, that I band. love that stuff. It's awesome. Go watch some OK Go music. Yeah. Oh, videos. Definitely, They're definitely incredible, good. and and That's they cool. do it all in camera. There's no special effects. Oh at yeah. All, so oh, so the second part of the question: Do you recommend any any photography books? Yeah, you see, I, I say there's there's not books that are relevant to what the world is. That's what it's moving so quickly this way. Mm. I think attention to design, inspired by how you frame things in a box, you know, really thinking about where spaces are, thinking about the negative spaces mm. as much as what the actual subject occupies. Things like that are important because it changes the, it changes your outlook of just centering things in the middle. But those are kind of like rules to live by, but just look at stuff. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I've been doing this forever and yet I still spend a good part of my each day, each day looking at things and just, I, and I think for me, the important thing is I want to continue to be in awe of other people. You know, yeah. it makes you up your game all the time. And being in awe of other people, whether they're racing drivers, rally drivers, whatever, photographers, filmmakers, I just constantly inspired by other people. And if you don't take, if you start taking that stuff for granted, it's going to pass you by. Awesome. Justin wants to know from Jen, what's up with Porsche Passport, the monthly subscription service? Do you know anything about it? Is it worthwhile? What's the deal? Mm -hmm. It says for 3K a month, you can get a 4S or a GTS delivered to you. Yeah, we just recently launched that Porsche Passport, and it's it's a new program that Porsche's doing. Um, it's actually something that our CEO was pretty much behind, but you can it's a subscription service, so very much like people were doing Ubers, not everyone's really wanting to buy a Porsche or buy a car in general these days, so rather than buying a car and having only one car, you can be more like Jeff, and you can have <laughs> multiple cars in your fleet, potentially, um, but it's just a monthly subscription, and you can have cars delivered to you. What's the membership, Zach? Pretty cool. I think it's only available in a certain it's areas It's only here. certain areas. Areas, yeah. I know Atlanta. Well, let's let's well, say obviously. we live in. in I want to say San Francisco, Atlanta, maybe Miami. It says to Miami. Atlanta, Vegas, Phoenix, San Diego, and Toronto. Let's see San right. Diego. If I want to get on a on a program in San Diego, what do I need to do here? Let's see insurance. Okay, so the launch program is twenty one hundred a month, and you can get Cayman, Cayman S, Boxer, Boxer S, Macan, Macan S, Cayenne, or Panamera. Or they're thirty one hundred a month, and you get. All the faster stuff: S's, 4S's, GTS's. It's not bad. That's only a hundred dollars a day. With insurance. That's Isn't this kind of like uh, Gotham Dream Cars days <laughs> when we were back at Gotham, yeah. right? <laughs> See, Matt but and I both worked at Gotham. I worked at Gotham that. Dream Cars in the, like, the, the wild west of exotic car <laughs> rental <laughs> yeah. fucking companies. But yeah. it's the same. I mean, you get to drive a car so many miles and you get to have it in your... You I mean, know, that's expensive, but it. it comes with insurance. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's, that's it's not that bad. $100 a day is not... I mean, that's what... And you're the, trading out. Well, and you, you think about what you get at Hertz for $100 a day oh, with insurance. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Butts mm -hmm. and seats sells cars. So you drive one of those for a little bit, you'll probably want to own one. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Maybe I should. I can, how long? That's, that's what's the? <laughs> maybe right. I'll. That's what I always thought the PC too. Yeah. Maybe I'll try one. Try it for a year. I wonder you how should. long you have to sign. I don't know. It could be kind of fun. Yeah. To see, to see, actually, but you can go through the whole model line. I could probably write it off. You could. If I that's wrote actually about it, true. If you I wrote could. about it, I could write it off. That's yeah. better than that's better than a lease. It's, although it's obviously quite expensive. It's probably some sort of clause about not having a Bernie's Mountain Dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else we got? I'm oh. sure we could take that out for you, Jeff. <laughs> um, wait, so um, 
it's coming to LA, did you say? The passport thing? I'm not sure if it's in LA yet. It looks like it's not yet, but I yeah, can't imagine. But we're talking it's about it. It should right? be, right? We did a Are soft people launch. doing it? Yeah. They are? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I feel like a bunch of companies started at the same time, and then I haven't heard much about it since. Yeah. I think Mercedes had a program, too. Cadillac. Lincoln, Cadillac, Cadillac can. Cad- they shit can Cadillac was theirs. the one, yeah. Yeah, no, so they can they theirs. Did. Okay. Yeah, they can theirs with Johan. <laughs> <laughs> Johan is the, the destroyer of car companies. Uh, Shikar says, oh, he, he, he takes issue with the fact that race car to production car is not always the best way, and his evidence is that he sees 911 RSRs spank the Ford GT too many times. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't the 911 RSR have an engine completely in a different place than the 911 Maybe. you can buy on the street? Mm-hmm. But okay. to the rules. To, to the, the rules. rules. To the rules. Yeah. The rules, so. No, the 911 has to live in a different world in the street mm-hmm. than the Ford GT does. It's true. Besides, a Ford GT wins at Cars and Coffee compared to 911. <laughs> Sorry, Jen, but it do. Uh, Maybe if it's Graham's car because yeah, it's pretty purple. Yeah. But you put that next this to a GT2 good. or S. I don't know. What would you take, Jeff? GT. Exactly. I am oh, a yeah. fan of the GT2 RS, but still, yeah. for GT. Oh, you would take the GT. Yeah, yeah dude. I the doors the go like this. Yeah, if it goes oh, like that. Oh, you're a bad guy. <laughs> Look at you, Sit a guy who bought a Countach. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 don't need, I don't need 700 horsepower in my 911s. I don't need that to be there. That's not where, that's not where I live in that world. I need mm. a GT3 Touring. Mm. Yeah, those are Dalmatian nice. blue. Oh yeah, Ooh. that's a good one. Yeah, we, good mm-hmm. one. Yeah, I'm I'm not in PTS. I, I land. think Dalmatian is Pantone. Yeah, Pantone blue. I think is, that's the closest. Oh, is it? Yeah, it has another. Co- it has other like two other names, and I can't yeah. remember. They Oxford. Co- Oxford blue is one, and then the German name, whatever the yeah. German word is. Um, that's so hard. But that's, it's an awesome color. It is a really good color. Yeah. So that there yeah. it is, and it looks different in a bunch of different lights. Like yeah. that's mm-hmm. all Dalmatian blue, and uh, I think Pantone's dangerously close to that in the PTS world. Yeah, we actually yeah. delivered a nine eleven. I don't know what variation it was at the PEC recently, but it was that color, and it's, it's awesome? gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Eskimo Bob says, is there uh, his combo questions? He's got fifteen <laughs> to $25,000. Question one, is there a better driving experience for that much money than a Cayman S? Mm, probably not. And then question two, I'm thinking of an E34 M5 or a 190E Cosworth for interesting four-seaters. I have a backup truck when needed. BMW. Other options, fifteen to twenty-five. BMW. Yeah. BMW? Uh, if you've ever driven a Cosworth, they're super cool looking, but they're super peaky. And they're, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. they're yeah. slow. I didn't say that. I just said <laughs> they they're peaky. Are. <laughs> Zach's driven. I drove a stock yeah. one, and then two weeks later, I drove one that was like lightened and hot rodded and stuff, yeah. and that was very good and great, yeah. but to get it there versus just jumping the E34 M5, like, right. yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's super cool. Peaky. But I'll tell you, whenever I see a Cosworth and when it sits there like it did in the day, yep. that's yeah. a pretty awesome car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a yeah. very cool looking yeah. car. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if you can get into a 500E that you'd want for that kind of money, but like that's an interesting four-seater. 325 IS sedans, like E30s are pretty fun mm-hmm. and probably at the lower end of his budget there and you could do some modding and have a little fun for that. What else is a fun? Evos. Evos. All yeah. the Evos. Mm-hmm. All the Evos. Yeah. And Eskimo Bob sounds like an old white guy. And if you go to a track day, <laughs> old white guy in an Evo, that's someone to watch out for. I had an Evo. I raced yeah. one at Pikes Peak. Yeah, and you probably destroyed fools in it a stock car, fun. right? It was pretty fun. Yeah. So. If you have 15 minutes and you need to hammer the absolute shit out of something, an Evo is a great yeah. choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing is when the Evo first came out, I was getting ready to go run a hill climb in New Zealand. And I, they were a premium at all the dealers, you know, as soon as they came in. And I called the dealerships to try to find one. And there was one at the Chino Mitsubishi dealership, which at uh-huh. that time there was nothing in Chino. Uh-huh. And a prison. So I went there, <laughs> I put the deposit down. When it arrived, I wired them the money. I was out of town shooting. I sent my parents at 70 years old <laughs> oh my gosh. to the Mitsubishi dealer. And you know, this is on the showroom floor as the hottest hot rod they've ever had. And, they're like, and my mom and it. dad show up at the Chino Mitsubishi dealer and drive away in the Evo oh, wow. that I had paid for. And I'm on the other end of the country and I call my dad, you know, oh, you got the car? How'd it run? He goes, oh, it's pretty fast. You know, pretty fast. <laughs> so they drove from the dealership straight to the port, put it on the ship, 
and it went to Mitsubishi Rally Art in Auckland. Okay. It was built to a full group end car. Carbon fiber foot boxes, the small brakes, the wheels, everything, anti-lag, all this stuff. In Auckland? In Auckland. Wow. Well, the, the New Zealand Rally Art oh, was in, in yeah. Auckland. Okay. So they built the car, it was a left-hand drive, it was a US car. <laughs> you know, so everything cool. about it. Still stickers in the window. Then the owner of the rally art drives it to the South Island to Queensland. I run the hill climb, the race to the sky in the car. We did pretty well with it. It was the first time I'd ever driven it. It goes back, I drive it back to Auckland, you know, the ferry and all that. Get here, it comes back to the United States with the stickers in the window and everything. As a full group in car. You raced it with <laughs> yeah. the window sticker on no, it? No, I did we put the stickers okay. back on and it just goes exactly like, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it came back in and get oh, back wow. as a full group in car. Hilarious. And I drove it in the Colorado Hill Climb Championship. I drove it at Pikes Peak. My daughter was the co driver at on in the Hill Climb Championship. We'd go to the hill we'd drive and I entered a US Pro Rally in Steamboat. Tanner Faust and both Tanner and Travis Pastrano will both talk about it. Because uh -huh. literally, I drove from my house with two spare tires in the back and uh, empty gas cans. We ran our own team in the thing, in the no whole rally. No vehicle. Funny, yeah, I finished third overall <laughs> in the rally. Wow. And Travis, wow. you, asked, you asked Travis about it. He remembers. He goes, "Who's this dude?" That Did you drive it, it home? No, I drove it home. Too? Yeah, everything. Awesome. So, wow. And so my cool. co-driver was my best man in my wedding. Oh, wow. And he, you know how you run the flags? Yeah. He's a surfer, so we ran a black ball flag <laughs> for his name on the car. So. Who's, who's Jim Glickenhaus? That's his yeah. boss. That's a, that's a, was, that's a move. Was, it was such a funny story. And then that car actually became a because you know it was it was all built it actually became a camera car and was oh, cool. with uh, Shelly Ward and their quiver of cars and so when I did the um, one uh, Hyundai commercial uh, at the Super Bowl commercial with Reese driving all sideways for the Hyundai's whatever the top Hyundai was at that time um, Genesis Coupe probably, yeah Genesis right? yeah Genesis Coupe and so that was our chase car was my old rally car that had been built by were you just like rally. oh this is familiar yeah, yeah. here we go and it's all painted flat black and the whole that's deal so, so cool. sick anyway that's my like that's my welded camera that, car oh yeah <laughs> that's my Evo story Wait, when you, when you story. shipped it to Auckland were they like does he know that they make these in Japan <laughs> <laughs> like, well that was what was funny that was, that was funny because it was the first time I mean, I've been lusting after an Evo for all these years, you know, and it was the first time I had a chance to do it because in 93, I ran in the World Championship Rally in New Zealand. I drove an Evo, and that was after a full season. That was actually in 94. Three, is that yeah, an 94, Evo two? Two or three. Yeah, wow. And I drove it, and the funny part was I, I just, after a full season running the Carrera 4, and I get in that car, and I'm driving, the, you know, in the World Championship Rally, <laughs> and I'm driving there, and I go, the front wheels are actually pulling me back on the road. You know, that's the first time wow, I the really four wheel felt drive works. Really works. It's a, I was so impressed with it. So I was like dying for the Evo to come to the America, and when it finally did, that was what that's I got. That's awesome. So, yeah. What so a I great! Still, that is a great that's Evo so cool. story. That's not like just an Evo story. That's right? fucking oh, badass. Fun. This will sound crass, but you were like the Hugh Hefner of cars. Yes. Yeah. No. Every story of yours is like, oh, I was, you know, oh, I brought this car to this thing, and I did this hill climb. And everyone's like, what? And you're like, then the next year I did this. You know, just, <laughs> but no. also after that rally in New Zealand, how nice must that drive have been back up to the North Island? Driving in, the, right. in New Zealand is the best. Oh yeah, and it's you know it's like uh, the only hard part was in the the Evo I drove in the world championship rally was right hand drive so there's constantly something that's reminding you of what yeah. side to be on the ro road no. because when you're running on a gravel road you go run a stage you use the whole road correct and you are just like in the zone <laughs> going off your co-driver everything he's saying and then you pull on the public street and it's like oh you know where am i but <laughs> what at least that, I at least that car's <laughs> right hand drive yeah. well then when i went and did the in my u.s model of evo yeah. and i drove it they i picked it up in the south island i raced it up the mountain there in, in Queensland when I started driving back up I was like you know I'm always on the wrong side I'm like always try to remind myself of where so, I am and then you know passing people yeah. it's like all the views on the yeah. wrong side and everything it's just it's hard when you're driving a left hand drive car in a, in, in in a, a right hand drive car totally yeah, so, yeah. That's, yeah that's mentally yeah. sucks <laughs> but the roads that drive is that drive is a really nice drive. No, it's yeah. the roads I, I said when I got back from running the world championship rally because at that time it was like a four day event i had because i did all the notes for it too so i was there a month 
I ran every stage in the World Championship Rally three times, did notes, and then raced the whole wow. So you were down there physically for about three weeks. I said, you know, I'd rather do one World Championship Rally a year mm. than the whole U.S. Championship because the roads down there, yeah. everything about it was just magical. And you know, the other thing, the depth of the field, because I was in Group N, I ended up finishing 18th overall or something in there, uh-huh. but and I was in Group N, and the thing was, there was always somebody within seconds of you. I yeah. mean, you know, in the U.S. Championship, the top six cars, you know, are somewhat tight, but the gaps start getting huge from there. I mean, I was battling day after That's day awesome. with cars on either side of me in the championship and down in New Zealand. Yeah, what was your recce car? Uh, a Mitsubishi, but right-hand drive. Oh, okay. So, and it, but a little thing, and you know, they have a weird deal where uh, you had to do all your runs before the school buses run. <laughs> you know, there was a, a window of time you couldn't be on the roads. And you know, you're, you're, it's just, it's magical. You know, it's like, for me, you know, I've never been a full-time racing driver. You know, I've always had a real career. But that month, I was immersed. Yeah. And I was running a world championship rally. It was just like, you know, it was like life really came together for That's me. Awesome. That I didn't think about a single other thing life. than racing. So. Yeah. How, how long have you been rally racing or driving and what was your education for it? Like this was 90s. I don't know. Was T- was Team Rental O'Neill cars. open? Or <laughs> <That's> my education. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, well, it was funny because in my world of uh, shooting stills, you always had a performance driver. You know, you always had somebody driving for you. And the interesting thing is, I had two drivers for generally that worked for me. One was Steve Millen, and the other was his brother Rod Millen, and they drove all the time on it. Well. Of course, you're out location scouting, doing things. I'm driving, he's driving, you know. We'd go at lunchtime, try to scare each other down the road we had closed or whatever we did. And both guys, Steve and Rod, would tell me, you're really good, you really should try the rally stuff, you know. And so here I was with Rod Millen most of the time, and Rod, Steve was the one who said the words to me finally that said, well, you know, enough people told me this, I should look into this. And Rod was running for Mazda and running the US championship and building cars and had a full Mazda deal. So he actually had the capability to build me something. Mm. And he finally said to me, he goes, let's build you a car. And so that was in 88. Wow. And he was built like a 323? 323 yeah. GTX, and I ran production GT. And then because Rod had a big you know, overall championship uh, program, he had all the spare parts. He goes, you know, I've, after that first season I did well in, then the next year he said, why don't we build you a group A car, go for the overall. And so, or sorry, a open class car. And so I took all the hand-me-downs from his stuff. We built that car as an open class car. I tied for the overall championship and, and won open class in 1990. And so that was like, that was, the rest was kind of, yeah. for me, that was just, I really loved rallying as much as I thought I would because I'd always dreamed of doing it. And I just loved cars moving underneath mm-hmm. you and everything. But it was funny, when I finished that, I thought, you know, it would be so much w- more worthwhile if I could do this in a Porsche. You know, yeah, it would feel, yeah, feel yeah, better yeah, to yeah. me. Right. And, and Mazda was great and every, it was so good and it really opened the world to me. But I just thought, if I could do this in Porsches, in a Porsche, well, 1990 was the beginning of the Carrera the 4. four yeah. So all of a sudden I had a Carrera 4 option. I had the contacts at Porsche. And so I came into the rally championship in 93 with a Carrera 4 with the full Perry Dakar running gear. So I had everything, a 3.8 R, well, I didn't have a 3.8 RSR motor to begin with. I drove in Daytona in 93, and when I got out, or 94, I got out of the car, I go, you know, that motor in the 3.8 <laughs> RSR is really good. Why don't we put that in the rally car? So, yeah. And I'll build a motor for me there, and, and did that. Yeah, that's the wow. car. I ran Wearing the on dial t-shirt today. Yeah, so the, oh, oh. Definitely can't play that. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. No YouTube on YouTube, unfortunately. But, so, um, but that's the car up there that I ran, so. That's so awesome. That that first year, how hard were you pushing your yourself behind the wheel that first year as trees are going by at, cool. at speed? Well, I've got a picture of the car on its side, and I've got a picture <laughs> of the car on its head. <laughs> hard enough, <Yeah>. obviously. <laughs> you know, it was like a, any learning curve, you know, yeah. and it and it was funny because I went quick right away 
And then I went to Canada and ran in a winter rally mm. in Canada. I won overall at the Canadian rally. The next morning it was like, Cal- Southern California <laughs> team <laughs> belies Canadian winter weather. And Canada's totally into rallying, you know, unlike yeah. us. It was a Colorado, it was a Canada, Canadian national championship rally and it was the Rocky Mountain rally and it was full snow and I won the thing overall. And so then I come back to the US and run my next race and I'm on my head. You know, it's it's one of those things where you just get that confidence and then something just a little know, take too about, much. Yeah. Yep. yeah, but I it was it was it took a, it takes a lot of commitment. You know, rallying's funny because you have to get on top of the car. You can't just wheel it around because it doesn't even steer yeah. you know it's like it pushes off the road all, like your your mm-hmm. safari car mm-hmm. if you don't really hoof it in there rotate it drive yeah. it on the throttle you drive around and it's pushing off and it's like what is with this yeah, thing yeah no you have to like stand yeah. it on the nose yeah. and, and huck really, it in yeah and you really you, that commitment you need to be there and I love that you know it was like left foot braking and yeah. spinning up the GT3 mm-hmm. turbos and all that stuff it was just like and, and the tenacious grip that you've never experienced in your life with Michelin rally tires just grabbing at the ground and you know 300 horsepower was what I had in the open class car it was it's a just, lot on yeah, dirt yeah it's and it was just so fun yeah it, that was one thing where horsepower just played into it so mm-hmm. much that you just were in there and I remember giving the one time my dad came up and I gave him a ride and he's a, he was a mechanical engineer and so all everything was about engineering he he just got out of there the tires just defied his logic because yeah. we were running side we're sideways down these roads in Washington State and he would he just he just couldn't imagine that you could be pitched in that committed and have everything stay on the car. Yeah, so it was it was a lot of fun. My, I, when I my first real like snow tire experience when someone really showed me yeah. how you can drive fast on snow tires, I was like, oh Jesus, what what is this wizardry? Yeah. Like yeah. that's real crazy. That's yeah, really it's cool. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Those pictures. Is that Larry? Who shot that's that? Larry. Larry, Larry of course, it's of Larry. Oh yeah, Larry's the man. Yeah. If you're in yeah. California, Larry Chen does <laughs> um, mm-hmm. does uh, uh, clinics, photo clinics with yeah. Canon. I even went to one. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I lent him my car for one, and it was uh, it yeah, was well, really you really and I cool. Were there. Oh yeah, yeah, you were yeah, there yeah, as well, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What you were, car did you bring out? Uh, the canoe on the, the roof. canoe, of course, because <laughs> you put it inside. Yeah, yeah and it that's was awesome. the it was the polished yeah. canoe I had on the roof. So. Dude, I got a. I got that. I really want to go canoeing. Yeah, I really want to. We, we got a, a canoe. I love the safari a idea. Safari trip. canoeing mm-hmm. trip. I would be so down. That with. would be because you know cool. that Carrera Four in those mm-hmm. pictures. I still have, mm-hmm. you and it's street license. That. I can put it. Li- so I could. We could <laughs> go do the, the trip. PC. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you tell me that car doesn't even have a key? Don't you oh, yeah, start just that with a battery back. tab? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if you yeah, see it. A pull top from a can. You just, you just arc it. <laughs> yeah. It's a good shady. Oh, oh so man. Cool. Uh, other than the art of racing in the rain, do you want to plug anything? No, I think uh, it, that's great. I mean, it's a it, like you said, it's, it's a sad movie at moments, but it's inspiring along the way. And I just... You know, for me to immerse myself into the car world. You know, it's funny to just say, you know, Denny should drive a BMW 3 liter, you know, and it should be Fjord Blue. And the next thing I know, they're all, you know, the whole art department's looking for three of them. Yeah. You yeah. know, it was just those kind of moments in the movie. Yeah, so where, your, where your idea yeah, becomes the thing. Yeah. And I yeah. think the car side of things, because I was the overall advisor for the racing side of it and car side of the film, it just was a fun kind of taking everything you knew to be there. And so. It's yeah, good. that's awesome. It's Pete. such a good movie. <laughs> Go see Jen at the Porsche Experience Center. Thank you. Go see the Porsches at the Porsche Experience Center. And Morning Shift. And Morning Shift. Well, I was getting to that. <laughs> morning Shift is the Cars and Coffee. The next one is September 7th. Yes. And it's at 8. 8 to 11 or 8 to yeah, 10. Yeah, it's eight pretty much like 8 to, to 11, 30, 12. It's, it kind of depends on the flow of traffic and kind of how we do stuff. But starts at 8. We're usually literally full. Parking lot is completely full by 8.15. Yeah, it's it's gnarls. So. And me and Jeff will be there. Yep. You going? Yeah. You gonna? You I'm gonna, trying. I'm gonna be in Colorado at the time, but I've been mm-hmm. known to just show up the next day somewhere. So. That part of jet life. <laughs> but no, we do have Jeff's drive, car, and so he'll be there back in spirit, with a regardless. In yeah, yeah, I won't be doing that. For we that. have to figure out how to do this. The, the, we the rally. Let's do it. Because if we really mention fun. this to Lee, who's yeah. Lee's gonna hear this. Oh yeah. Oh, we're gonna be on board. Does he like canoes? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be yeah. on board. All right. uh, th- that is it for us today. The por- uh, this Porsche. The Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. It is easy. 
All you need is a connection to, to the internet, a microphone, and ideally something to say. Uh, I don't think we have any more live shows this week, so thank you for joining us. We will see you next week. We I'm blanking about who's here, but somebody's here. That is for <laughs> sure. All right. Have a good Labor Day weekend, everybody. Go out and drive your sports cars. And if you see me in the Angeles Forest in a Ferrari 812 fa super fast, uh, kindly pull out of the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. Good day. <laughs> Thanks.